Won't you just, just keep worshiping him? Bless him with a song, with a song, with a spiritual hymn. As we enter into his presence with thanksgiving, we enter into his courts with praise. I would say of the Lord, he's my refuge. I would say of the Lord, he's my strong tower. I would say of the Lord. Just make that declaration over the lives of your people and over this house. Father, we declare an open heaven over this house and over the lives of your people. A place where you speak, a place where you reveal your heart, a place where the Spirit of the Lord is released upon the lives of your people. Thank you, O God, right now for an open heaven. Thank you, God, that even like Jacob would encounter, oh God, on the Mount of Peniel, and he would say, surely this is the house of the Lord. This is Bethel. This is the place. This is the speaking place of the Lord. This is a place where angels ascend and angels descend. It's a place where there, there are messages that go up to heaven and there are responses from heaven. Yes, I declare that this is a place this morning. This is surely a, the gateway to heaven. This is surely the place where God begins to pour out his power, pour out his spirit, where God begins to speak to us in visions and in dreams, where, where God begins to speak to us through his word and God begins to prophetic utterances we, we honor you Lord this morning we honor you Lord because this is a place where you speak where you move 
where your heart is revealed we thank you for we feel the very weight of your glory yes in this place thank you jesus we feel the very kabod of god troubled mind right now we speak peace we speak the shalom of God there will be nothing lost nothing broken we speak the favor and the peace of God over your life over your mind right now that God is stilling your spirit God is giving you faith to believe that he's in control. God is giving you faith to believe that he is moving by his spirit. See Won't you just join hands with the pastor next to you right now? So, Father, we bring our brother and our sister before you. Yes, we speak a word of blessing over their lives. Yes, we speak the favor, the grace of God. We speak that the, today they will become the oracle of God. We speak today they will become the speaking place of God. We pray that you would move through them. You would begin to minister to them right now. Father, we pray, O oh God, if there is a need for healing, heal. If there's a need for deliverance, deliver. If there's a need for restoration, restore. Remind them of who they are in you. Father, I thank you that there is an unveiling of promises. There is an unveiling, O oh God, there are, are, of blessings. There's an unveiling of capacity that father you are preparing some of your sons and daughters for elevation and you are preparing some of them oh god for promotion and you are pre preparing some of them oh god to be used in the kingdom of god father i thank you this morning that you are ministering to them that in that, that that nothing has a hold over them sickness doesn't have a hold over them depression doesn't have a hold over them anxiety has no hold over them medical conditions have no hold over them that today their, their spirits are still before you their hearts are still before you in the name of jesus we speak we speak oh god we speak oh god like you spoke oh god and when you spoke oh god you created and so we declare that the atmosphere in their lives is changing the atmosphere in their homes is changing the atmosphere in their person is changing there's a shifting taking place this morning we declare in the name of jesus that i has not seen nor ear heard neither has it entered into the heart of man the things that you have in store the things that you have in store we bless you we bless you in this place this morning father thank you thank you for what you are doing in this place and in the lives of your people 
We know that when we leave this place, we will never leave the same way we came in. We will leave changed, transformed, touched and anointed by you in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. 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 The book of Isaiah chapter 41 verses 10 says, So do not be afraid, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, help you, uphold you with the, right, with the righteousness of my right hand. All who rage against you will surely be ashamed and disgraced. Those who oppose you will be as nothing and perish. Though, the, though you search for your enemies, you will not find them. Those who war War, wage war against you shall be nothing at all for I am the Lord your God who takes a hold of your right hand and he says to you do not be afraid I will help you. Amen this is a word for you this morning do not be afraid I am with you says the Lord Amen and this is what he says those, those that rage against you will be ashamed and disgraced. Amen. That he says, you will search for your enemies and you will not find them. Amen. That I'm here to say to you today that God is your deliverer. God is the shield. God is the shade upon your right hand. And God is watching over you. Amen. So let's just worship God together. It's good to see all of you in the house of God. Let's just praise God together. We're going to have a great time in his presence. Amen. God bless. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on. There's no one like our God. We're going to put our hands together. We're going to put those legs. Come on. We're going to praise him right now. Hallelujah. We're going to give him all the praise this morning. Come on. Let's go, Joe.
nothing else better than serving our God. Amen. Praising our God and declaring that we are grateful, thankful, and mindful of Him. Come on. What is ours right now? Come on. It's all about you, Lord, and nothing else. Take it over, Joash. Come on. Wandering into the night. Wanting a place to hide this weary soul
lost another one I am, I am free You see right now When you're standing in victory You can triumph over all things There's no one like you, amen. Oh, you put it all together, God. Like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, God. You're there in our midst, oh God. Because you never leave us, nor do you forsake us, God. Hallelujah. Sing, ladies. You God of all my prayers, 
God of my present, God of my future. God of my future. You write my story, God. You write my story. And you hold it all. You hold it all. How many believe that right now? God of my present. together our present our future you are in the middle yes, God. you are transitioning us from one phase to another from one level of glory to another you are transitioning us in every sphere of our life and so today we bless you father we glorify you yes Lord. we honor you Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your goodness. We bless you in this place. We honor you right now. If you are in this place and you are trusting God just for a healing touch upon your body, 
Won't you just raise your hands wherever you are right now. We trust in God that God can heal and God can deliver. We want to bring our sister Cookie before the Lord today and she's in hospital and we trust in God that right there God is about to touch her completely. A speedy recovery. We speak to her body to respond to the word of the Lord. I bring your sons and your daughters that are in the house today that are standing in the need of prayer. Father, we speak healing over their body. Let every system in their body respond to the word of the Lord that we say that by your stripes they are healed. By your stripes they are healed. In the name of Jesus, let no sickness control their bodies in the name of Jesus. Father, every infection will dry up. Father, we thank you right now. Every level will come to normality. They are fearfully and wonderfully made by you. I speak, O oh God, to every issue of circulation. I pray, O oh God, that circulation, O oh God, right now. O oh God, let the blood flow in their bodies, O oh God. O oh God, flow to every limb, every muscle, every, every part of their body. I pray for every blockage to be unblocked in the name of Jesus. We declare right now, you are the God that heals and there is nothing too hard for you. And so today we speak of God that their breathing, they will breathe normally. They will breathe with greater ease. They will breathe, oh God, with greater ease in the name of Jesus. Every chest infection, every lung infection, in the name of Jesus. Oh God, you are healing right now. You are healing right now. You are healing right now in the name of Jesus. Every irregular rhythm of the heart, in the name of Jesus, you are healing right now. In the name of Jesus, I speak strength to their limbs, every swelling of the limbs, oh God, to come back to normality, every water retention to be removed. In the name of Jesus, we believe in you that you are the God that heals, and we speak your word, we speak your word, and you said, you said your word and you heal every disease, you said your word and you heal every and in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you for your healing. We thank you for your healing power that is in this place. And so we believe we would hear testimonies of the healing power of God in the lives of people. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Not by might. Not by power. But by your spirit, says the Lord. So bless us, O oh God, as we continue in your presence, as we gather around your word, just minister to us in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen and amen, amen, amen. You may be seated, amen, amen. I know our Sunday school is about to leave, and as they are leaving, can we sing that song? No, all other gods, they are the works of men, amen. You are the most high. Come on. Our Sunday school could leave it.
praise offering. Come on, you can do better than that. Let's give God a praise offering. He is Jehovah Elohim, the strong and mighty one. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thanks to worship team. Amen. Amen. I bless the Lord. I bless the Lord. Amen. All other gods, they are the works of men. You are the most high God. There is none like you. There is something that is very, very important in our understanding and in the songs that we declare and decree. Amen? That God is about to show up. Amen? That song, as they sang that song, I was... Uh, just moved in my spirit. I was moved in my heart and in my spirit. I believe that in, in the not too distant future, we will host, we will host delegates from all different parts of Africa and parts of the world, even in our church. Amen. Amen. And there are certain songs and certain sounds that will begin to usher in that the very presence of God and this collaborate a whole lot of, 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 of unity, even in the worship and in the praise, amen? And so I believe that. I just felt it, I just, as, as we sang it, it sounded to me like people from all different nations all singing together, amen? And so there's an expectancy in my heart to see the fulfillment of that which the Lord showed me even this morning. So I share that with you uh, as a prayer but I also share with it with you as a declaration in faith of where we're going to. Amen. The Lord has pro prophetically declared over this house that this house will be a well, a resource center where others will come in and drink. Amen. And so everything that we do in the house is part of positioning the house to fulfill the prophetic mandate. We're not about just to have church. We understand that we are the church. Amen. And that when we get together, we're not just having church or we're not just having a social club, but we understand that there are some things that God is developing. Amen. And that's exciting. Amen. Aren't you excited? Amen. I'm excited about the future. Amen. Amen. I'm excited about the present at what God is doing. Amen. Uh, there, there, there were stages in my life that I that I never paused to celebrate the moment in which I was because I was almost looking for what's the next thing. There were some moments that when, 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 when there was a time of celebration, I was concerned. I was concerned when, when they're going to say crucify him. Amen. And, uh, and in that moment, I lost the opportunity. I'm, <laughs> I'm telling you the truth. The reason I share this with you is because sometimes we don't learn how to enjoy and celebrate moments. And we don't learn how to interact in that moment and stay in that moment and understand what God is doing in that moment. And I realize that life is a sum total of moments, some, some total of encounters, some total of, of, of times when God begins to speak. And if we miss the moment, and we miss that encounter, we miss that, that time, that download of what God is doing in that time. Everything goes out of, uh, out of sync. And we sometimes miss out what God is saying. Amen. So this is the exciting part. Amen. So we're going to stay a little bit today. And, and I can promise you this is the last day that I'm staying on the topic of destiny helpers. Amen. You okay? Amen. 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 I can assure you that it's not a repeat of last week. Amen. And we're going to speak a little bit about destiny helpers. And I want to just capture just a few definitions that is going to help us today. But today I want to speak about destiny killers. So we're going to kill it at that point, right? And so, so uh, that means we're going to end it at that point, right? But we want to speak about destiny helpers. And in that, understand that they are destiny killers. Amen? And then, so in this time, I asked them on Wednesday, I said, bring your sword. Bring your axe. Amen? Yeah. Yeah. 
because we're going to kill something. Oh. Yeah, yeah. You see, you, you let things run. Now, I do not know whether any of you have found snakes in your house. The Zulu word, nyoka, eh? is it? For snake? Nyoka. Okay, so, pretty, you help me, right? Everyone looking at me and wondering, what, okay. So, yesterday I was, at the, uh, I was at the shop, I was buying some things, and the one, the cashier told the other lady, you know, that she's a snake, and she says, you know, she was speaking in Zulu, and so she told her, Nyoka. So I said, why are you calling the lady a snake? <laughs> you know? So she got a shock, and then she, she, she decided, you know, cashing. But I want you to understand that sometimes when you see a snake, what do you do? You kill it. You chop it. You throw the stone. You take fire. You burn it so you don't want to see it again, isn't it? Huh? Isn't it? Now you're all acting like, you're, no, 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 Pastor, I don't do that. I just love nature. I pick it up with my hands. I carry it around the house. I put it around my neck like, like my hand. No, no. It's a, amen? But when most of us, when you see a snake, you go into survival mode. And it says, either be killed, kill or be killed. I do not know the difference between a garden snake and a, a, a you know, and a green mamba. I almost want to say black mamba, but I remember that they're both, right? But I, I, for me, you can't just say, whatever a snake is there is a killer. I don't care what it is, I'm going to kill that thing. Because it's invading my space. Right? Now, you don't like to live with snakes in your house, is it? <laughs> you are smiling. You don't like living with snakes. Why we let snakes in our lives? So today we're going to kill a snake. We're going to kill an inyoka. Amen? Amen? It's got no place in our lives. Yeah. Amen? That, that we're not going to live a life of deception. We're going to not live a life of, of being deceived any longer. Amen? And this is a very important part. So we understand that in this if you got your Bibles, turn with me, and uh, maybe I'll use this as our point of departure. We're in Job chapter 29, verses 15 and 16. And the scripture says, I was the eyes to the blind and the feet to the lame. I was the father to the poor, and the cause which I knew not, I searched it out. Right? I was the eyes to the blind, feet to the lame. I was the father to the poor, and, a co and the cause that I knew not, I searched it out. That means there are people in the world that are confused and they have lost their bearing. Some who do not know what to do with their lives. And this is a sign that they are in need of a destiny helper. Being eyes to the blind means you're able to help someone do something that they cannot do. If they cannot see and you're helping them, then you're eyes to the blind. If someone cannot walk and you become the feet to the lame, you're able to carry them, walk with them into the purposes of God. And then he says, a father to the poor. Right? And sometimes it's not only just the poor materially or financially, but it's the poor in spirit. Right? And then he says, the cause that I did not know, I searched it out. That means there are things that even I don't know how to respond 
or do not have an answer for, I do not say it is, I, it's not my problem, I don't know. I know in business terms they say, not my circus, not my monkey. Is it? Yeah. No, right? There's a, so what they say is, if it's not your problem, don't carry it, just pass it on. But when we come into the body of Christ, we are our brothers and our sisters' keeper. And in that, I do not want to search out answers only for myself, but even the things that I don't understand. That means when people come to me and they come with problems and concerns that I don't understand, I still search out the matter so it can, I can be a blessing to them and in turn also a learning for myself. Amen. So a destiny helper is not just concerned at looking good for themselves, but they're looking for the good of others. Amen. So when we spoke about it, what is a destiny? A destiny is what you created to be. A destiny is your divine purpose. Your destiny is your, is your assignment on the earth. It's, your destiny is a predetermined future the plan and purpose that God has for everyone. The destiny is a blueprint for your life. The destiny is a natural course of events planned by God, which inevitably will happen. Amen? This is the, the plan of God. Then we spoke last week and I gave you a list of who are destiny helpers and what do they do. And I listed a few for you last week. I spoke to you that destiny helpers connect you to the top. The destiny helpers facilitate your, your destiny. I want to give you a few others. Destiny helpers are ordained by God to assist you. Have you ever thought that God has deliberately put some people in your path to help you to where you're going. Amen? Destiny helpers share their experiences, scars, wisdom, and counsel to guide you. That means they've been through some things and they share it with you so that you don't have to go through the same learnings. That's why you have a destiny helper. Not to, for you to make the same mistake that you made before. Amen. A destiny helper will give you counsel. And they will give you the counsels of the Lord. Most people do not take the counsels of their destiny helpers seriously. Amen. This is a very important part. Your destiny helper has a vested interest in seeing you move forward. Amen? So even within the body of Christ and within the church of Jesus Christ, and, and you know, church, one of the, the ministries of the church and lo local church and pastor of the local church and, uh, and leaders of the local church is to give counsel to people, right? And I've spent many, many hours counseling people over the years and still continue to do it. But one of the greatest frustrations that I have is that people do not take counsel serious. That means they do not use it to break through. Now, when you're sick and you go to the doctor and the doctor says to you, you have this problem, firstly, the doctor asks you, what's wrong with you? When people come for counseling, sometimes they want you to dig. It's like you have to take out the spade, the shovel, the hoe, the pick, and you have to keep chipping. Bang, bang, bang. And sometimes you spend three hours. The reason you spend three hours is because two and a half hours was digging. Five minutes is what you'll tell them what to do. But you see the doctor, because you pay him, the longer you spend with him, the more the consult. So I'm thinking maybe we should put a charge to counseling. Because when you go <laughs> to the doctor, very quickly you say, Dr. Penny, yeah, Penny, yeah, Penny. 
you know, no power, you know, no strength, no, can't wake up, you know, everything quickly, you know. It, and then he said, do this, do this, do this, take one injection. Is it? Some of you go past the injection phase. And you say, give me the tablets, I'll take the tablets. Right? And so you take the tablets. But you don't go to him and say, do you think you're right? Are you sure? Are you taking a chance? But then we got those people that self-medicate. They their own doctor. They Google. They ask, call a friend. And says, I have this pain. What do you, what do you take? Some of them go to the doctor and says, Doctor, I was Googling the symptoms. And most of the time, your doctor will shout at you when you come with your Google story, isn't it? Because Google is made as a platform to give you all the this thing. Some of you even get scared to see the doctor because Google told you something, you got shocked. You thought, hey, now I've finished class, oh yeah, you know, I'm, go I'm going to heaven. You, you went and repented, made right with God, you phoned a friend, the people you hurt, everybody, you know. This is but the challenge is, we don't take serious the counsel of God. Things that belong for our freedom, things that belong for our breakthrough, Things that belong for our, for, for our deliverance, we don't take serious. Why? Is it the problem that we don't take serious the things of God? He's the greatest position. He made us. And so when you come for counsel, how much of time do you spend talking about what your situation is, and how much of time do you spend listening, what is God saying to me? And then how much of time you take working on what you are doing because this is what God told me. The great position, the creator of my life told me this. I want us to become a church that deals with things differently. Not because I'm talking to you. But it's because I want you to understand when you receive the counsels and the wisdom of God or even the Spirit of God reveals something to you, take it serious. Do something about it. The Holy Spirit is your greatest destiny helper. The Spirit of God is your greatest destiny helper. When you get a prompting from the Spirit of God, you take it serious. You stop everything. You go and reanalyze, you go and reiterate, you go and do what, make the alignments and the, the changes that you need to because the Spirit of God is saying it to you. If you would do it quickly, you would have the deliverance of God quickly. Amen? So this is a very, very important part. So understand that they will give you counsel and the counsel is not for themselves. This is the counsel of the Lord. That's why you go to a Christian counselor. A Christian counselor, your pastor, a leader, a Christian counselor. And by the way, in, in August and September, we are starting a counseling training. It's going to be an online counseling training on Saturdays. And it's going to be conducted from the U.S. with, 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 with Bishop Thomas and their church. And, and, and it's going to be very, very good. Amen. So for anyone that is desiring and they feel God has blessed them with a gift of encouraging and just ministering to the lives of people, we're going to do it on Saturdays. Okay? It's going to be a powerful training tool. Amen? Maybe we can include it in our youth program and just let them join in with it. We can stream it even at the church. If you want to come, we'll stream it live at the church and you can connect here and join the class from here if you have internet problems and whatever. We're going to do it that way because I believe it's a very, very keen thing. All of us should be trained to give spiritual counsel to others. 
Amen? Because that's what we are. We are encouragers. Amen? And that's what should be our first course of ministry. So I want you to, to, to think about that. And in the future, we will have more, you know, more training in that regard. So understand the counsels of God. Destiny helpers will save you of the pain that they have been through. Destiny helpers will, will, will save you from frustration. Destiny helpers are tools that God uses to manifest his plans for your life. Amen? So understand that God has sent destiny helpers to you. So we understand that from Job chapter 29, the characteristics of destiny helpers are they are eyes to the blind, they are feet to the lame, they search out even the things that we are not aware of. That means we don't leave anything un, unaddressed or unattended to. Amen? So this is important. Now, sometimes, some people, because of covetousness or envy, have lost out on their destiny helpers. You need spiritual sensitivity to attract destiny helpers to you. Amen? This is important. But let's list a few things that are destiny killers. Destiny killers block your dreams. Amen? Firstly, destiny killers block your dreams. Like the family of Joseph, they laughed and they chastised him for his dreams. So that means some of the, when you share with somebody what God has said to you or what God's plan you believe is God's plan for your life and they say, oh, not you, you know, someone else or, or they make light of it, or they brush you off, or they just think, no, that's a destiny killer. It's hard to think that some people close to you are killers. Right? But understand that destiny killers block your dreams. Destiny killers delay your destiny. That means they are people that will constantly put obstacles your way to stop you from er achieving the goal and reach the plan or live in the will of God for your life. They delay your dream. No one can steal your dream unless you give them the power. They can delay it. But I want you to know that delay is not denial. Amen? That means God is saying he's going to begin to do it. It's just a matter of you recalibrating -cal and changing your position, right? Destiny killers frustrate and waste your efforts. Don't share your dreams just with everybody. Don't share God's plan for your life with everybody. You got to stay true to what God is saying to you, amen? So understand that destiny killers will waste your efforts. Don't align yourself to people that are going to begin to let you go around the same mountain around and around and around because they didn't want to deal with something. The nation of Israel spent 40 years going around the same mountain because they did not want to hear the advice of Caleb and Joshua. And, the, and because of the, them not understanding it, they took 40 years. Destiny killers will always see your negative side. They'll always remind you of the mistakes you've made. They'll always remind you of the places you've come from. If you are around people that only reminds you of the, the bad elements of your life, all of us have bad things, bad characteristics. Not everything about me is good. I won't say you, I, I say me. The reality, not everything about me, I, I am not just a bundle of joy all the time. Most of the time, yes, I'm a blessing. Ask any, I'm a blessing. I'm not looking at it. <laughs> anyway, sometimes I can be difficult. Sometimes I can be demanding. 
Amen. Yeah. I'm admitting. Is it? Sometimes I can be stubborn. Sometimes I can be set in my ways. If I'm sleeping, don't wake me. I somehow, they say to me, I have a few karate moves if I wake up and they shocked, you know, the thing. But you also have things. I won't say your thing, I'll say my things. Right? So just to help your faith. I'm a destiny helper, so I'll help your faith because you know how you kick. <laughs> right? But the reality is, so, so we understand this, that destiny helpers focus sometimes only on your negative. And understand, you cannot help somebody only focusing on their weaknesses and the negatives of their life. Destiny killers always tell you that your destiny is too big for you. When you're around people that keep on telling you why you cannot do something, rather than saying, if God told you this, how can I help you to achieve it? That's a, that's a destiny killer. You know, some people that say, hey, you're a dreamer. Is it, it, it was there an advert? Vuyo. Vuyo, you're a big dreamer. You know? Is it? But there was an advert, right? There was a big, you know, some people just think, some people just dream big things all the time. And they say, hey, you know, just live here on the earth. Live some people only want you to live where they're living, in no dreams, no nothing, just live here. Amen? Wake up with a dream. Wake up, dream big. Amen? Dream big. Turn to your neighbor, say, dream big. Amen? Some of you are saying, uh, someone didn't say nothing to the other person. <laughs> uh, they, they, they turn their head like this, like as if I'm going to think that they said something. Nothing came out their mouth. Amen? Tell them dream big. Amen? Because understand, if it's your family member that you are speaking to, when they start moving up, you start moving up. Yeah. Amen? Be around people that are doing big things. Yeah. Then you yourself will start to do big things. Don't be around small-minded people. Small-minded people like to bother, worry about your business. Small-minded people say, oh, hmm. They, they're doing the, no, small minded people always, oh, mm, talking big again, again. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. No one like them. Bought a new car, no one like them. Hmm? They forget the stink. <laughs> no, no, I, I, this, don't, <laughs> no. I won't say the other part, right? But, the, but you, 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 you know, don't be around people that don't want to dream big. Amen? That they're always saying to you, hey, this is what you're going to be. You will amount to nothing, this and that. No, no, no. We serve a big God. But you also serve a God that forgives. And he says when he forgives, he wipes out our sins that they cannot be remembered. As far as the east is from the west, so far has God removed our sins and our transgressions from us. When people remember this, uh, the next time people that come and tell you, oh, you know, you're acting like you're all holy and you're all God, they say, yes. <laughs> you know, then they may get confused a little bit because, because they're waiting for you to say, ah, I'm just making it, I'm trusting God day by day, one day at a time, Lord Jesus. No, no, no. As far as the east is from the west, so far as he removed my sins, he's wiped it. He's washed it with the blood of Jesus. He says, though our sins be as scarlet, they are white as snow. That means you can't see it. So what? Why are you remembering? You're not God. Maybe the next time they come and they remind you, say, you're God. <laughs> come on. You got to understand, don't be around people that think tell you your dream is too big. Dream big. Tell your neighbor, dream big. Dream big. Amen. Nothing's too big for you. Amen. So understand this. This is important. Get that in your spirit. Your destiny killers 
will be discouragers. There will be people that will limit you, mock you. Destiny killers weaken your faith. Amen? But the strangest thing about this whole thing is destiny killers are all around us. In this life, you are not short of destiny killers. So you have to distinguish between a destiny helper and a destiny killers. They are in the church. They are at home. They are in your family. They are in the office. They are in the school. They are your neighbors. All around, in your car, snake, all around. Amen? That's why I said to you, bring your sword. Yeah. Jeremiah says, you are the battle axe of the Lord. Say, Lord, make me a battle axe. Wield me. Your word is like a two-edged sword. It cuts asunder. Divides to the bone and to the marrow, isn't it? Why does the Bible call the word of the Lord a sword? Because there are some nyoka, some snakes. Yeah. And you need a sword to kill a snake. You need a chopper. You need a kati, you know, the bush knife. You need something, yeah. Don't drag it on the floor. I mean, use it. No, I said that because that's what chats with. <laughs> they let the sparks fly, you know. They, they say, I mean business now, you know. <laughs> A lot of us don't know that. Uh, true, that's how they say. But the fellow that's dragging it won't do anything. The fellow that's not dragging it, you don't worry. Is it? <laughs> you know, Indian people used to put small knife for the children, for the babies. <laughs> because they know in yoga. Hey, Jesus. Amen, amen. So we understand that they are Destiny killers all around us. I'm saying to you, don't be a destiny killer. Be a destiny helper. Amen? In Matthew chapter 2, verse 1 to 18, the account of Herod. Herod is an example of a destiny killer. He was bent on destroying the destiny of Jesus. He was bent on abolishing the destiny of Jesus. When he heard, when the, when the wise men came to Herod and he says, where is he who was born king of the Jews? Herod said to them, tell me where he is so that I will go worship him. And after that, the, the, when the wise men find Jesus, the angel of the Lord says to them, don't go the same way you came. Go in another direction. Leave this place in another direction. Why? And immediately what Herod did, Herod issued a decree to kill every Jewish young boy that was born under the age of two years old. That's the spirit of Herod. The spirit of Herod is to kill everything that has a dream, has a vision, has the plan of God, carries an anointing to deliver a generation. There's a spirit of Herod that is alive on the earth today. There are many young men, women, there are many families that are even not here today because the enemy has been trying, the spirit of Herod is out there trying to destroy the plan of God for their lives. There are some of the most anointed guys that go through some of the worst experiences in, in their lives. The, 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 the challenge with drug addictions, alcohol addictions, 
any other form of addiction is the way that the enemy is trying to use to pull these people away from the purposes of God in their life. If you go back and you look at the purpose and the will of God for the life of that person, it's great. But what the enemy tries to do is destroy their character, destroy their reputation, destroy their testimony, destroy their life. And we as a church are not going to allow it. We're going to kill the spirit of Herod. Don't think you are dealing with an alcoholic or you're dealing with these addictions in front of you. No, you're not dealing with that. You're dealing with something that is trying to kill a purpose of God for their lives. So when you're dealing with somebody, don't deal with the symptoms. Deal with the destiny that the enemy is attacking. When the enemy is trying to destroy your home and your family, understand this, there is something in your family. The enemy won't be attacking if you've got no value. I said to you before, thieves don't break into a house because there's nothing to steal. Have you ever seen thieves go into the poor person's house? Why? They're not stupid. They know we go break into somewhere where you know there's something of value. Why is the enemy attacking your life so much? Because there is value that you carry. There's a grace that you carry. Why, why, why are people trying to break you down at school, at, at university? Why are people trying at your workplace? Why are the people are, uh, attacking you? Because they know what, they, they know what they, uh, you are carrying. And sometimes they don't know it, but the enemy knows and the enemy uses them as an agent. Become aware of sometimes Satan's agents. You don't become an agent of Satan. You don't pay, play devil's advocate. He already got a lot of people advocating for him. He don't need you to. Is it? Come on. We have to understand that there are the spirit of Herod that is trying to kill a generation of people that carry promise, that carry purpose, carry in them an anointing to destroy the works of the enemy. Nehemiah, Nehemiah chapter 2 verses 10. Nehemiah in the rebuilding of, of, of the, the wall had, had a large task in front of him, but he was constant, constantly being discouraged. He had to deal with a sand ballot and a Tobiah. Amen? They hated him. These were enemies. These were secret agents of Satan against Nehemiah. Whenever you got a plan of God for your life, there will be sand ballots and Tobias. Amen? So the next time you, you got a divine assignment and all of a sudden you find there are spiritual attacks and somebody is, is starting to talk against you doing the will and the work of God, don't call them by their name. Say, I come against the sand ballot, Lord. I come against this Tobiah. They say, what Tobiah? I come against this Tobiah. They don't know, you know. Mm, I can see that spirit. Yeah. Is it? Understand that. When you come against it, this thing, you say, I deal with the spirit of Herod. Amen? I deal with the spirit of sand ballot and Tobiah. In the book of es Esther, Haman was a destiny killer. He wanted to wipe out all the Jews. Not because they offended him. He just hated them. There are some people that, that have an assignment. We, we live in a world where there's an assignment against the church of the living God. This week, uh, this week I was just informed, you know, a few years ago we had Dr. Boulon from India come to preach for us. Older man, he came with his younger son, Solomon. He came to preach for us. 
they were in, from Assam, in, which is the northern part of India. And I was there a few years ago preaching for them as well. But this week I found out that in the area of Assam in India, they started to destroy every church. Every church, every worship center has been destroyed. Hindu extremists came with bulldozers and destroyed every church. They destroyed houses that were attached to the churches. They bulldozed it down completely. They attacked, uh, Solomon was attacked. They tried to, to, to destroy their church. Fortunately, their house is, is, is in front of where the church is, so they, they were kind of protected from that. And they called theirs a prayer center, so they didn't, they didn't know what it was, whether it was a church, or this, so they left it. But every other church in that whole area of Assam has been destroyed. We are living in a day where there is persecution of the body of Christ. In South Africa right now, there's a great attack against the church. Everything that has been done politically has been to silence the voice of the church. And so we have to understand that they are destiny killers trying to stop the plans of God. And we need to understand there's coming a day, there are other countries in the world where, where Christians have been persecuted on a daily basis. We've got to understand that there are, there are those that have a, an assignment like Haman that want to destroy the children of God and the people of God. And we have to understand there are Hamans even in the world today. But I'm here to say that the same, the same plan that means Haman built a, 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 a place to hang Mordecai and he was hung on the same thing that he destined for Mordecai. I'm here to say to you, the church of Jesus Christ will be strong. God will deliver his church. And I'm here to say to you that the enemy, whatever they are planned, will be the same thing that will be used for their own demise. Amen? We've got to believe that. We've got to believe that God is going to show up on behalf of the church, on, on behalf of the body of Christ. In Mark chapter th 2, verses 3 to 12, and I'm ending here, the four friends bringing their, 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 their paralyzed friend to Jesus, they come to a house that is filled with people wanting to meet with Jesus. But nobody was prepared to make room, make a way. The crowd were destiny killers. Don't be so self-conscious that you're not aware to make room for somebody that may need God to do something in their life. Yes, they needed God too, but they could have being a partaker in a miracle. The Bible says, Jesus says, according to the faith of the four men, not of everybody in the room, the all church people in the room. But God says, because of the faith, Jesus said, because of the faith of the four men, this man was healed. Destiny helpers will tear the roof to get you into the room. Align yourself with people that will begin to do everything they can to get you into the presence of God. Be the kind of person that does everything you can to get others into the presence of God. Amen? Don't say, hey, it's too busy, it's too full, or this service is not for you. Bring them in. Amen? Next week when you're coming, don't come alone. Bring somebody with you that needs God. Amen? I like, you, I like the fact that you brought yourself. But this week, reach out to somebody that you can bring also so that they can encounter what God has for them. Amen? We are addressing destiny killers. Amen?
And I'm saying to you today, take out your sword. Be the battle axe of the Lord. Address the spirits that are around us. Let's just bow our heads together. Father, we bless you. Father, we honor you. We glorify your name. Father, I pray for every son and daughter of yours, those that are in the house, those that are joining us online. And Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that you would remove, you would address every destiny killer in their lives. Father, that today that you would confound the enemy, you would bring confusion in the camp of the enemy. Father, that even when the enemy is planning a strategy, Father, like even like how you did for your servant Elisha, and you moved him out of the city, from amongst the, en uh, the enemy that had him surrounded, they could not even see him leave. Father, like you did for Jesus, when the people were driving him out the city to the edge of the city, to kill him or to throw him off the mountain, Jesus walked through the crowd of angry people that were about to kill him, and they did not touch him. I pray today like you did for, for Daniel, for, for, for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, as they were in the fire, O oh God. You, O oh God, were with them even in the fire. Lord, be with your sons and daughters. Even they surrounded by a whole lot of snakes and, and a whole lot of, O oh God, people with evil intentions. May they never be consumed by the things that are around them. Father, let them be like Daniel, O oh God. Even when they feel like they're in a lion's den, shut them out of the lions in the name of Jesus. Deliver your sons. We come against the spirit of Herod that is trying to steal the destinies of generations to come. We come against the Sanballats and the Tobias, O oh God, that try to hinder the rebuilding of the house of God and the rebuilding of homes and families. Father, we come against every spirit that tries to destroy and tries to pull down. We come against the spirit of Haman that tries, O oh God, to wipe out the body of Christ. We want them to know that the church of Jesus Christ is alive and strong and in the world. And we believe today that we will be the light of the world. We will be the, the city that is upon the hill. Oh God, that we will be the lighthouse in the name of Jesus to our generation. So Father, I pray in the name of Jesus. We come against every spirit that is attacking the purpose, the will, the plan of God in the lives of your sons and daughters. Help them to identify it and help them to overcome it in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen and amen, amen, amen. Come, let's just...